please just look at this it. This is complete It's not him. Please take a look at it. So besides the photos, what else do you have? The forensic team is up at his property now. That was a scene from the new drama, Meadow. Follows a couple, Sarah and Phil, as they grapple with the abduction of their son during a family road trip. Joining us now, the co-stars of the film, Olivia Wilde and Luke Wilson. Good to have I, you both thank you. on board this I morning. I think, actually, Olivia, drama's the wrong word for this. Oh. It was like, for a parent, it was a terror film. Opening Nightmare. scene. Yeah. I'm just sitting there, and you're talking. I'm looking at the cute kid. I'm going. You knew it. And I kept waiting for a car to like I smash know, and kill the kids. Anticipation. But I will tell you that was every bit as terrifying for a parent knowing something was about to happen. Yeah. And it pulls you in. Yeah. From the start. Yeah. It's remarkable. Yeah. We had a really great director. This woman, Reed Morano. She actually cast her son as our fake son in the film. Oh wow. Which was extraordinary. Powerful. Yeah. I think it was her way of saying, I'm going to put myself emotionally exactly. there right along with you guys. But can you he, talk about Reed also? Her story yeah. about the idea of this. Her father died when yeah. she was 18. And everybody's world just blew apart around her. Exactly. Including her own. And she was really interested in the idea that grief is an individual journey. Everyone has a very different experience, and it's very isolating. And even two parents who experience the same loss deal with it in completely different ways. But before grief, it's torture. Exactly. I mean, it's just permanent torture. Yeah, yeah and that's one interesting thing to me. It's like one of those like little paragraphs you'd read in the metropolitan section of your paper, and you right. would always wonder, you know, what happens to these people involved in these kind of tragedies right. that are very personal, like a year or two later, because, you know, yeah. their lives go on and you, and you responded your character responded in a much different way mm -hmm. uh, talk talk about that how you really you're a good guy. You lost your moral compass there. Right. My character kind of unravels a little bit to where he wants to kind of take retribution right. against the understandably I mean that's an, another thing is you know I love the movie like Taken mm -hmm. you know right. where this is kind of the flip side this to is it, where yeah. what actually would happen right. to right. a couple that powerlessness too. Um, and your character is also a cop which to me is like this this poetic thing that you're you even can't protect your family right. you're when, supposed to when be that the is symbol of do. justice yeah right oh that's my right. gosh and now so the sort of interesting side note much bigger than that though is you actually were pregnant while filming this well I was or? pregnant in pre-production it was an interesting thing I came onto this project years before we started shooting and came on as a producer as well and I loved this script I was so excited to cast it and get going and then found out I was pregnant and I thought oh no what are we gonna do we're gonna have to push the movie and yet our director Reed saw it as the greatest form of preparation she said <laughs> now you can truly play a mother ever she's right. like this is your Daniel Day Lewis moment you're really pressing <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very method. I have children. Yeah, Very yeah. method. <laughs> Mike. You know, uh, unfortunately, you know, I have seen a couple of people in real life right. uh, experience horrific tragedies with regard to their children and grief can have a tendency to collapse and destroy yeah. a relationship, yeah, a husband course. and wife relationship. How do you do that on a day-to-day -day basis filming? I mean, it, how do you get into that? It, 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 it's so heartbreaking because you imagine your child is a representation of the, the combination of you and your partner. So if you were to lose your child, how could you even look at your partner? All you would see is your child's face. So I think it made sense that these people could barely look at each other. We barely touch in the film because mm. it's, it's that impossible thing to, to recognize each other. And yet we're the only ones who can really help each other. So, and, I mean, yeah. And yeah, also it's just, I mean, I find that, you know, working on a comedy, it's one of those things. 
don't realize until you work on something like this is that, you know, I find that the goals on a comedy are very clear cut. You're trying to make a scene funny, and then when you're kind of going for more emotional things like this, the goals aren't quite as clear, and right. you don't get the kind of payback of like, mm -hmm. oh, did, right. did that scene work? Was a crew guy smiling? You yeah. go home at the end of the day kind of wondering, you know, what you've done. So, mm -hmm. well, and, and even yeah. with the movie, it, it's, it's got to be nerve wracking. Of course, the reviews and the response has been great, but it also has to be nerve wracking. You go through it, and it's, it's sort of like I, I remember seeing Tender Mercies yeah. with Duvall in the 1980s. It's a great and a, movie. And about like four months later, I was just somewhere seeing it go. Okay, that was a really great. Yeah, right. but this sort of has that feel of tender mercy. Where it where takes its time. You know what? It's, it's not like, like the American movie, movie where the plane in bursts through flames in the opening scene. Yeah, exactly. It just, it's just sort of right. stays with you. You leave it, and it stays with you, right? Yes. Yeah. And also, Reed, the director, is also a great cinematographer, and so it's interesting to see a movie directed by somebody that has such Vision. a good eye. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. she was operating the camera as well. Yeah, this was a job oh. for her, right? Well, yeah, this is her directorial <laughs> debut, but she's a very accomplished cinematographer, has made films like Kill Your Darlings and Frozen River, and we were lucky enough to have her DP the film, direct it, and operate, so she was often just inches from our faces. Seems like the women involved with this movie all had multiple jobs. Yeah. Yeah, we were I, I, find that I, do, I find that I do much better with female bosses. <laughs> I, I was going to say, <laughs> Luke, you are much I more agreeable and yeah. willing to help, whereas a guy comes up to me, I'm like, who does this guy think he is? It takes yeah. Real man to respect. Exactly. Ex ex you, you're in my position every day. Good. Yeah, yeah. You know, the women, it's right? Like it's women's power. Anytime yeah, right. I try to step out of line. But it is. I mean, this is serious. I, I read a Newsweek article on this, and it is, in in, in a Hollywood that Mika talks about an awful lot, especially after after the Sony uh, hack. Women are treated horribly in Hollywood in so many respects. This is a bit of a breakthrough. It is. You know, it was not an easy film to get financed. And I think that had a lot to do with the fact that it was a female-driven drama directed by a woman, produced by women. And I think that made it tough for some people to imagine that it was worth investing in. And I love that we proved them wrong. That's okay. great. I hope that you were paid accordingly and equally. That's right. Okay. Bomber, I'm a big fan, Dave. Hey, I'm you. a big fan. Thank Walmart. you. Next time you come, I'll, I'll have the Fila stuff on. <laughs> okay. I'll see if I can get myself. Meadowland is in theaters this Friday and on demand October 23rd. Oh, that should be good. Yes. Olivia Wilde and Luke Wilson. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great to have you back on. Yeah.